Hello everyone, myself Dr. Sanjay Khatri, I am pediatric educator on this Unacademy platform. In today's session, I am coming with 5 MCQ in 15 minutes. So today I am covering the MCQs on infectious disease. The today's concept is infectious disease. How question come on infectious disease? What should be approach? How should we reach measles, measles, mumps, chicken pox? What should be our approach when we are dealing with infectious disease? So I have picked some 4-5 prototype question in infectious disease to be discussed in this particular session. So come on this first question. Read this question carefully. Read this question carefully. A 2 year old child who has been well except for a fever. Fourth day develop a rash. Erythromatous maculopapular rash on the trunk. Rash appear on fourth day. As rash appear temperature returns to normal. So key point is rash on the fourth day. The key point is rash appear on fourth day. As rash appear temperature returns to normal. So what is the approach? We supposed to know in which fever rash appear on which day. Now this is the approach. In chicken pox first day of fever rash will appear. In scarlet fever second day of fever rash will appear. In measles, fourth day of fever, rash will appear. Measles, classical history. Child is having running nose and cough one day, slight fever. Second day, third day, fever is slight, but running nose cough may increase, may have developed conjunctivitis. Then, fourth day, fourth day, rash appear. Parents always give classical history. That my baby is having fever, running nose, cough, conjunctivitis since last three, four days. Today is the fourth day. Now, today rash appear over body. The class key point as rash appear, fever shoot. The child whose temperature is 99.5, 99 is fourth day. As rash appear, temperature become 100 to 103. As rash appear, fever shoot. In our question, as rash appear, temperature returns to normal. So, it can't be measles. Yeah, it can't be measles. So, it is what is this? Yes, you are right. It is roseola infantum, also called known as sixth disease, as it is caused by human herpes virus type 6. Human herpes virus type 6. The classical point as rash appear, rash appear on the fourth day. As rash appear, fever disappear. As rash appear, fever disappear. Measles, fourth day rash. As rash appear, Fever shoot. As rash appear, fever shoot. Visual and phantom. Rash appear on fourth day. As rash appear, temperature returns to normal. Temperature returns to normal. So, answer for this question is, yeah, definitely it is roseola in phantom. Fourth day rash. As rash appear, temperature returns to normal. This is roseola in phantom. Also known as sixth disease caused by Human herpes virus type 6. What is fifth disease? I will discuss in my question later on. Okay. Now, read this question carefully. Four-year-old child presented with fever, running nose, conjunctivitis, cervical lymphadenopathy, corsia, gray lesion surrounding by erythema on buccal mucosa. Generalized blanching rash on the fourth day of fever. Rash appear on fourth day of fever. So, now, key point. When rash appear, fever rises. Rash appear, fever rises. Rash fourth day, fever rises. So it has to be measles. Simple. Fourth day rash, rash appear, fever disappear. Roseola and phantom. Fourth day rash, rash appear, fever rises. It is measles. So this is the classical history of measles. Now, measles is diagnosed very clinically. It's very common in our childhood days. But now vaccine is there. You people are not encountered so many cases of measles. In our time, if one baby in the class and a family develop measles, whole class or family develop measles. Okay. Because highly communicable disease. So, what you should know about measles? Just 3-4 minutes. This is the way we should approach to infectious disease. The only human being is the only reservoir. It's spread by droplet infection. Common in preschool age group. Prodome means running nose, mild cough, conjunctivitis, last for 
four to five days. Rash appear on the fourth day of fever. As rash appear, temperature increases. Coplic spot, coplic spot, whitish gray spot on the inner surface of cheeks. Opposite, second molar appear second to third day after the prodrome symptoms and disappear two to three day after rash. So you need to remember coplic spot where it's appear second lower molar. Okay, two to three day after the prodrome symptoms. When child is having conjunctivitis, running nose, mild fever, third day develop coplic spot. Okay, when comes to you with fever, definitely look for coplic spots. Okay, fourth day rash and fever, look for coplic spots. It's measles. We should know this basic thing about measles. Now see, another basic thing, it is caused by RNA virus. Incubation period is 10 days. Secondary attack rate is more than 90%. Now, clinically, diagnosis by clinically. I told you, it's clinically very easily to diagnose clinically. Fourth day rash, as rash appear, fever shoot. Coplic spot, lower third molar. Second to third day of prodrome symptoms, you find coplic spots also there. But sometimes when there is a diagnosis, confusion is there, some atypical picture is there. Yeah, confirmed by circulating level of IgM antibody. Okay, now question come, what is the commonest complication of measles in children? Yeah, it is otitis media. Otitis media is the commonest complication of children in measles in children. Okay, other are the neurological Acute encephalitis present in 1 to 2 per 1000 cases. But see this, SSPE, it is the dreaded complication of measles. 1 in 1 lakh due to autoimmune response, 3 to 8 years after the measles infection and 100% fatality within 6 months of diagnosis. Suppose a child comes to you in a picture of encephalitis, altered sensorium and he has a history of measles, 1 year, 1 and half year, 3 year of age. Measles history is there. Okay. And now child comes to you after 4, 5, 6 year in encephalitic picture. One DD should be SSPE. Why? Because if you diagnose it, it's a 100% fatality. No treatment is there. 100% fatality. How you confirm? No. No measles virus. Not isolated from the CSF. It's con confirmed by antibody positive in CSF. Measles antibody positive in CSF. So, you need to remember, this is the pattern, how we, suppose this mumps is there. So, mumps is the same pattern. What is the incubation period? What is the spread of infection? What are the classical features, parotid swelling? When parotid swelling occur? In how many patients, unilateral? In how many patients is bilateral? Commonest complication of mumps in children and in adult. In children, aseptic meningitis. In adult, ochitis. So, these all are the complication. This is the pattern we need to follow in chickenpox, mumps, diphtheria their incubation period. Each infectious disease take hardly 3 to 4 minutes to cover in 3, 4, 5 slides. Okay. But you need to remember what are the points we should know. In my infectious disease class, this is a short class. It gives you a orientation what we are supposed to read in when we cover infectious disease. This is the way I cover in measles, mumps, diphtheria in my class. Okay. Which cover short things which cover all MCQs of your upcoming exams. Okay. Diphtheria, we have this MCQs this year. Okay, like this. What are the commonest complications? What is the incubation period? How we can diagnose? What are the clinical features? This is the way. In book, it's written two, three pages. You may confuse. But three, four, five points you need to remember about each infectious disease very well. Now, most common cause of bronchiolitis. This type of question can come. So, for this, you need to remember these few things. Epiglottitis caused by HNT. Bronchiolitis caused by respiratory syncytial virus. Acute LTB, acute laryngotracheal bronchitis or croup caused by para-influenza virus. You need to remember, this question look very simple, but yeah, definitely ask in the exam. It can come in the micro session or PSM or maybe pediatric. H influenza causes epiglottitis ask 3 to 4 times in last 6 to 7 year in all India paper. Okay. Epiglottitis caused by H influenza. This current year aims to 2020 June aims. Question on epiglottitis was there. A child with high grade fever with drooling saliva 
epiglottitis. This is the infectious class. I am not going to cover epiglottitis in detail for you. Infectious, you need to remember the infectious agents. Epiglottitis caused by H. frangi, bronchiolitis caused by respiratory syncytial virus, and acute LTB or croup caused by parainfluenza virus. Now, come to the question number four. A four-year-old child ascending paralysis. Peripheral neuropathy. CSF normal except for an elevated protein level. Yeah, you are right. It is LGB. What is this? It is acute. It's an acute ascending symmetrical flaccid paralysis. It's a LGB. So I am not going to cover LGB, which I have already covered in my neuro session. Okay. But the purpose of this question, if you find a patient with LGB, just ask what is the preceding history? Child is having either having loose motion or respiratory infection two to three weeks prior this episode. If LGB occur after loose motion, then calmness organism causing LGB is Campylobacter jejuni. If LGB occur after respiratory infection, then calmness organism is Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Now come to our question again. Child experience ascending paralysis. What is the precipitating agents? See whether loose motion given or respiratory infection given or mycoplasma return or campylobacter jejuni return. Here it is written campylobacter so It is how the question on infectious agents come. This is the purpose of this class. So campylobacter jejuni causes LGB. Campylobacter jejuni causes Gulenberry syndrome. This is the key point. In Gulenberry syndrome, if we do the lumbar puncture, cells normal, only protein increase. This is known as albuminocytological dissociation. This is Gulenberry syndrome. I have covered in my neuro session this very well, but this is for Campylobacter jejuni causes LGB. Now, question number five. One week after the fever, maculopapular rash and erythema appear on the face of an infant rash appear on the face of an infant the organism can call also cause this question come last year in jipmer okay yeah you are getting this rash over face slapped cheek appearance slapped cheek appearance somebody slap on the cheek appearance slapped cheek appearance cheeks are red yeah it is parvovirus b19 it is parvovirus b19 but question is not about this this organism can also cause so, parvovirus B19 can cause pure red cell aplasia also. See here. So, parvovirus B19, it is causes erythema infectiosum, also known as fifth disease, in which slab cheek appearance is there. It causes acute or persistent arthropathy, mainly in older children and adult. Then, it can also cause glove and socks syndrome in adults, in which Purpuric eruption occur on the hand and feet. It's a glove and socks position. The rash, the, the rash involves the area where we wear the gloves and socks. So it is gloves and socks syndrome in mainly in adults. Then pure red cell aplasia. It may be transient or it's chronic. The so pure red cell aplasia and definitely it is one of the cause of hydrops fetalis. We remember these five things you remember about parvovirus. Erythema infectiosum, also known as fifth disease. Acute or persistent arthropathy in adult. Glove and sock syndrome in adult. Pure red cell aplasia and it may lead to hydrox fetalis. Now, come to the question. This is the question. This is the rash appear or face. So this is parvovirus B19. Slab cheek appearance and it is also causes pure red cell aplasia. So this is the purpose of the class. We cover measles. We cover roseola and phantom. Fifth disease, sixth disease. Suppose question on chicken pox come. How it will, will come? A child develop fever, same, same day rash appear. Same, same day rash, chicken pox. Fourth day rash, it can be measles, it can be roseola and phantom. With fever, with rash, fever increase, it's measles. With rash, fever disappear, roseola and phantom. And other LGB occur by Campylobacter jejuni, other manifestation of parvovirus. You should know about the infectious agent causing bronchiolitis, epiglottitis, acute LTB, croup, all infectious agents I have covered. This is a class to give you orientation about the infectious agents. Now, something about an academy and me. You can find me 
on educator plus batch in concise batch course where i am about to start my pediatric from the first week of july capsule course 1 2 and 3 so if you can read pediatric from me join this batch concise batch i will take the pediatrics in three parts one part will be in july second part will be in august and third part will be in september i will try to give you a nice concept of pediatric in that course okay you, this is my telegram group you can join me on my telegram group okay i will i follow some ritual times you know, ritual classes the clinical mcqs i cover every thursday it's a free class clinical mcq i have already cover mcqs on cardiology neurology nephrology about to come hematology i will cover in next session question on rheumatology clinical mcq it's a free class so you have a orientation what educator supposed to teach you how you acclimatize with the educator and the subjects okay if you want to join you can use my code dr sanjay khatri to get 10% off on your subscription so now these are the free classes you should aware of this the fast revision throwback previous year question i am in quizzes i am taking this session presently clinical mcq pg21 every thursday 10 to 11 clinical i cover high yield mcq clinical mcqs in this session please come and join this is a free class now free youtube sessions 5 minutes in 15 minutes the session we already have i am also covering five images in 15 minutes taking classes of syndrome so these all are the ritual which are the free classes to be covered in the unacademy okay so definitely definitely whenever you have a time whether you are a pre final year students or final year students or intern definitely you should enjoy the class see in 15 minutes, we have covered so many basic of infectious disease. Hope you like it. Okay. So this is when you like it, when you want to hear more from the educator, when you acclimatize with the course, then at the time, you should prescribe an academy plus course. How to prescribe? You all are good techno savvy person. You can go to the app and prescribe according to your need, whether you want it for one month, three months, six months or 12 months. But yes, once you acclimatize, go for it. Then Keep reading. What's ultimate motive is? Let's crack it. Thank you.